You seem cool. Fia, you seem cool. How are you doing? Good. How are you? I am fantastic. Thank you so much for joining me. Listen, normally how I start these things out is I tell people what may, what I think is cool about them or, or with you, the, the list is too long. Okay. Because once I started finding you, I found out more and more. First and foremost, your TikToks make me laugh, belly laugh. I love them. How, how was your date? Why are you out of breath? I just, I just um, took tights off and... This is where I'm at. This is where I'm at. You talk to yourself in a weird way and the content you pick, like the <laughs> conversations, they're so fun and so honest. Then I dig a little deeper. You're a musician, right? Mm -hmm. And then yeah, I dig a little I bit am. deeper than that. You actually have a lot to say about like uh, just the world being kind and being well. So I love you on so many levels. So thank you oh, so much for you. joining me. <laughs> thank you for having me. I really appreciate that. I'm pretty honored actually right now. So. <laughs> okay. Well, that was easy. Well, that's all we all the time we have though. So thanks so much for okay, joining. Okay, bye. See you later. <laughs> Um, why don't you tell me a little bit about, um, I have so many questions. Okay. So let's start with the, with the comedy. Cause I, I, do you consider yourself funny? Cause I think you're funny. I would, I would like to consider myself funny. If okay. not, that's okay too. Okay. You okay. don't have to, you don't have to. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I wanted to talk about a little bit about your comedy. The, the TikTok thing, what I like about TikTok versus Vine, I, I liked Vine as well, but <clears throat> the sense of community is really great. And I think yeah. it's, a, it's, amazing the interactions you're able to have and to be able to to reach people like so when i started this series you seem cool i was just on tiktok and i was like these people they're really interesting i just want to i just want to talk to them in like real life yeah. so it was such a fun idea and it's all able to come to fruition because it's such a community i like it better than like instagram and twitter because there is a real sense of community with the sharing and the duetting and all that so yeah. i think it's really fun but you got found out by uh, a, a big guy uh, himself the rock with your tequila one you know what you're not that hard because take a take a shot of tequila without making a face bet you can't Bitch, sorry. Type of shit to make the hood go crazy on the interstate. My question yeah. is, how mad are you at The Rock for not tagging you? I know. <laughs> I was like, who is in charge here? Because I know it's not him. Um, do you do like, do you do any comedic acting or anything like that? Or I, I kind of like doing more skit type of things yeah. and where I'm, I'm playing both parts, or it's, it's okay. very awkward. I'm a very awkward person. Um, so I, maybe I, I could tell actually you, you think that there's no hiding that, but it no, doesn't okay. mean we love you any less. But you know, Fia, you gotta, you all, you all. Um, yeah, you know, it, it comes with the package, it's fine. Um, so yeah, so I just, I just thought to myself, you know, I'll just hide behind the camera of my phone and pretend to be. Um, all these different people, and that's yeah. gonna work for me. You so. will, you always have a co star, so that's good. You don't have to worry about yeah. that, you know, yeah, definitely. <laughs> Um, I, I like to, uh, I, I, I'd like to know who makes you laugh. Like what's some of the stuff that you like? Um, so I love, I mean, I grew up with SNL. Like I was like five years old, staying up late, 1130 at night, watching SNL. Um, so Amy Poehler, Tina Fey, um, Best. I just, Chelsea Handler. I, I like all like the female comedians, like, mm -hmm. you know, they motivate me to try and continue to be funny and, and start more of a community of women, yeah. especially on TikTok. Um, so yeah, I, I, I just, I love, I love them. Um, it's funny because you're like in a <clears throat> percentage of the TikTok women that don't dance to the dance videos, right? Yes. Or <clears throat> lifestyle brand stuff. Like it's like the percentage of women that do comedy, they're out there, but mm -hmm. it's, it's definitely, you don't see as many. So that's great that you're trying to cultivate that. Yeah, yeah. And if I were to dance, um, I definitely would lose my following yes. for sure. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking yeah. of awkward. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> now, okay, now you have to. And then hopefully The Rock would do edit and then you have a dance video together. I mean, it's phenomenal. You can't really beat that. That works. I'll do it. <laughs> I'll embarrass you, myself for it. You have to. Yeah. Um, right. So you're a musician as well. Yes, I, okay. I, I yes. Because I was I looking so. at, I was looking, I was scrolling through everything, and then all of a sudden you like, then all of a sudden you just belt out this killer voice that you're singing. I'm like, oh wait a minute, I'm like, wait, she's a musician as well, right? So you you have you just had an EP come out recently, right? Yes, yes. So my band Wilmot Red and I, like it's me and five other guys that I grew up with. Uh, we just dropped our first EP called Washington Street, and awesome. uh, it was so fun. 
just like recording and, and working on it. It took us a long time and now it's finally dropped and people are listening and like Great. the feedback is fantastic. So That's awesome. it's a, uh, yeah, it feels like just like this new chapter in this beginning. So I, I just can't wait to see what happens with it. Great. So Wilmot Red, what, what's the story behind the name of the band? Uh, so <laughs> Wilmot Red. So originally we were named 20% because we were all servers and bartenders and we were like, oh yeah, I always tip 20%. Um, and then we were like, that's a dumb name. So we're gonna, <laughs> we're gonna go ahead and try and find something else. So I grew up in Marblehead, Massachusetts, which is right next to Salem where the witch trials happened. Mm. Um, and there's this pond that we all grew up on skating and it's called Red's Pond. And the woman it was named after was named Wilmot Red, who was <clears throat> wrongfully convicted as being a witch. And she was the only woman from Marblehead to be uh, convicted as a witch in the Salem Witch Trials. And I was like, that's so rock and roll. Yeah. Um, so, <laughs> Nothing so says rock and roll like the Salem Witch Trials. Yeah, like for being convicted as a witch. Yeah, yeah that's, that's right. rock that's and roll. That's pretty badass. I, that. I got yeah. you. I'm with you there. And then Washington Street, is that a street that you, is that your yeah, home so address or what is it? Washington that? <laughs> Street, it's where all of our music was made. And like, yeah. oh, it's where yeah. the band started. So we were like, oh, sentimental. That's great. Um, yeah. If, if we started in Practical Jokers, we'd be called Lotteret Lane. Because the Tenderloins, oh. the comedy troupe that yeah. in drugs, we used to rehearse in my mother's basement. That's right. Yeah. I lived home until I was 34. What up? And <laughs> I I would be, uh, we would rehearse in my mother's basement on Lotteret Lane. So yeah, that That's actually right. Lotteret Lane's a pretty badass name. That's actually write, a really good, write it down. We gotta I'm going to write that down too. We have yeah. so much to write down. <laughs> this is also yeah. being recorded. So I'm not sure why yeah. we're writing anything down. <laughs> no, we'll, we'll reflect. So, okay. So now one lives or one dies. Okay. All right. Music or comedy. <laughs> Your music career or comedy career? Which one has to go? Oh my God, that is no, we, awful. We um, hit hard here on You Seem Cool. I know. We, get, we dig deep. Okay, here's what I would do. I would probably get rid of comedy only because I could somehow incorporate parody into the music writing. Well done. And then we can do something like that. Well done. I know you felt that one was hard, but I have the follow-up ones even harder. Ready? One lives, one dies. Trader Joe's or Target. People are always like, oh, what do you do when you feel down? I go to Trader Joe's. I go to Trader Joe's in all seriousness, I go to Joseph's, okay? Because I know those people are gonna lift me up. The employees at Trader Joe's, heaven sent, they are saints. They were made in a lab. The manners. And when they say, how are you? I act, I'm like, I'm not well. And they're like, we have biscottis. <laughs> Okay, like you gotta give me like ten minutes for this one. I love that um, it took you longer, to th less to think about your career than, than a store chain. You're like, I, my career is fine, music fine, whatever. Like you could be, you could be on the path to be a multi million dollar comedian, and you're like, forget oh. it, forget it. I'll sing parody songs. <laughs> but you're like, but where um, am I gonna get uh, my when fresh it comes avocados? Oh God, because both of them have it, and you know that. Yeah, um, I do. I do. I would. I would get. I get rid of Target. Target. Oh, I gotta, controversial. I, gotta go, I know. I gotta go. To, I gotta go with Joseph's. I gotta go, like I'm die I'm hard. Joseph. All right. Well, you know what? Much respect. Much respect. Fantastic. Fantastic <laughs> question. You do have multiple songs, right? So, is there one that's like st stands out that you're the proudest of, or? I think so. Um, so we have three songs. Uh, the the one with that is catching most of everybody's attention is the song called "My Own Way." It's the last song on the EP and it's just this, you know, knowing you have to get over somebody, but not being able to, because you're in your own way. Um, and it's just this kind of like power song with a lot of metaphors and I end up belting at the end and people are like juiced up. Um, so yeah, I love that song. It was, it was one of the, like, the easiest ones to write off okay. of the EP and um, it's getting the best feedback. So oh, yeah. Nice. Nice. Yeah. It's very okay. exciting. Yeah. So like when you have to break up with Target because mm -hmm. you've you've basically ended them, you're gonna have to <laughs> what's your thoughts on IKEA? Are you a discount <sighs> furniture shopper? I am. Um IKEA stresses me out though. Me too. It's the, I will too much. say it's too much. I will say okay. I do love a good home goods or home sense, but I do feel like you gotta go to the right one. Because if you go to the wrong ones, there's just too much coming at you, too much noise. You have to be able to take your time. 100%. You got to go to an organized yes. home good. 
Because yeah. uh, this, as soon as you walk in there and the candles are with the pillows, I'm out. I turn around. Me. I just leave yeah. the car and I walk out. Yeah. yeah. You you Absolutely. hit me as a fat, as a maxinista as well. Sure, I'll do that. I'll yeah. do that. Yeah. Um, I I love the maxinista shoes. Oh. Um, and and let me just add, like, when I go into Home Goods or TJ Maxx or Marshalls, um, I have this like sickness where I have to buy like two to four, five, seven, eight, nine, ten candles. And um, I'll end up like sitting on the floor of the of the store, just like like sniffing, like sniffing <laughs> them up. Um, and it's pretty bad. And like my roommate, she's like, what is clinking in your TJ Maxx bag? And I'm like, I just dropped $72 on candles. <laughs> And they're and they're on sale, so you yeah, know. Oh God, yeah, yeah, yeah. Lots, yeah. yeah. I'm a I'm a rack a rackanista. I love Nordstrom rack. So I do. I'm, and you know, I, I love Nordstrom rack. Do you just go for like the sales? Do you do you have I like do. a specific? Well, I used to thing. work at Nordstrom, but uh, yeah. back in the day, I worked in I worked at Nordstrom when I was chasing the dream, living in LA. So yeah. I ended up <laughs> chasing the dream, right into Nordstrom and working men's retail. But I I always loved the brand. I always loved the, the company. And then when the rack started hitting, I was like, ooh these have the same jeans, but they're like way less. And then yeah. I just started going over, you know, so. That's, that's the dream right there. So music, comedy, and then you were also a very kind person who who worries about other people, right? You wrote a song about mental health as, as well. That's one of the songs. Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. Um, anyone else is one of the other songs, uh, which, it, which has to do with mental health and has to do with, you know, I, I've had, a lot of family and friends and myself go through, especially this year in general, yeah. like everybody's been going through everything. And um, I just thought, you know, writing music is kind of a way of therapy for me. And if it can at all reach people and, and you know, affect them in, in the way that it affects me and, and feel heard or seen, you know, that's like the biggest blessing and the biggest gift for me. Um, it's good because yeah, when you write that to help yourself, you're also people <clears throat> listening to it will help. It'll help them hearing it. You know, it's yeah. the same thing with yeah, the, yeah. I say, I hear, especially during the pandemic, people have been reaching out about, <clears throat> about practical jokers that it's always on. And they're yeah. like, you know, we just sit down and watch and it's been getting us through and, and stuff like that. And it always feels like, I love to make people laugh, but I also love to help people. Uh, so it's, yeah. it's nice that when your, your passion can serve both causes. So exactly. Yeah. yeah. It, it's, it's, it's an, it's an amazing feeling. It really is. And then do you play any instruments? I do. I play the guitar. Not that well. Yeah. I mean, mean to talk to you about that. You need to pick up the guitar. I know. I know. You know, John Mayer has been asking and I was like, John, (laughs) you got to give her a little bit, you know? (laughs) I'm like, yeah, I'm not, I I don't have a PRS. I have like a guild that's uh, pretty old and I'm going to, I'll try it out. (laughs) Um, Yeah. No, I, um, guitar's hard, huh? I know. I know have I'm not going to do it. it. No, you, I've tried a lot. Play? I've started and stopped a lot. I've started yeah. and stopped a lot of things. I was like, you know, for a while, my grandfather played a harmonica and I had his harmonica and I was like, I'm going to jam out. How hard could the harmonica be? The harmonica is so hard. It's difficult. It's very <laughs> and difficult. then I picked up a ukulele. I'm like four strings. No problem. No good. No good there. Um, then I bought a baby grand piano and I put it in my, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Like, <laughs> I was like, I'll try this out. I thought I was gonna. I tried to DJ for like a half a minute. I, yeah, uh, I was a lot of not like I love music and I really respond to music. I'm just not good at it, so I know my limitations. <laughs> I feel like I could see you as like a trumpet player. Like I, I don't know why. I just see you in this jazz. I got that club. attitude. I got that yeah. attitude where I'm like, here he goes. Watch him. Watch him go. A yeah. sax player, maybe. Yeah. yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. 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 Some sort Rip of. Rip it up on some stage. sort of horn just, in the horn section yeah, for sure. Yeah, the, the brass. You know all over it i see that well for a punishment in the show they made me actually play the didgeridoo which is that uh you know didgeridoo is yeah yeah so i had to i had to end up learning how to play the didgeridoo uh because i was doing an australia (laughs) i was doing a live uh traffic um at 2 30 in the morning i was doing live traffic and weather for (laughs) australia so i had to wake up 2 30 in the morning for a week and go ahead and and part of the programming was while my meat pie (laughs) while my vegan meat pie heated in the uh microwave i had to play the didgeridoo so I had to sit oh. there for th- for five minutes and play the didgeridoo. I got pretty good at it at the end. <laughs> That's awesome. I love that. That's you awesome. on guitar, right? Me on the didgeridoo and the rock on lead vocals. I think we're set. I think we got it. Oh, we're set. That's a trifecta. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> well, my instincts were right. Uh, Fia James, you are cool. Thank you so much for joining oh, me. This is so great. So much. 
Thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. <laughs>